From the prior part of the lesson, we learned that when we're trying to find the time constant due to a capacitor that spans the input and output of a device, for instance, in this common source amplifier, if we had our input at the gate and our output at the drain, we have this CGD capacitor that we have to worry about. We're going to learn a way to deal with that capacitor called Miller's theorem. And what this will help us to do is to eliminate this capacitor and treat it as two separate capacitors. So we'll look at a more generic form instead of just looking at a single transistor. Let's say that we have an amplifier that has a gain value of minus A. So it's an, got an inverting gain with a magnitude of A. And we put a capacitor C across this amplifier. What we'd like to do is figure out what the effective capacitance is if we look into this uh, input terminal. So what we'll call this is C effective input. And we're also going to do the same thing for the output, C effective output. OK, so looking at the input, we're going to try and find the impedance looking into the input. And to do so, we will take our amplifier leave the output open circuited and we're going to put a test voltage source at the input and measure the current that flows through the device or out of the uh, voltage source I should say. Now we note that if this is an ideal amplifier the output voltage is equal to minus A times V sub X. So we can write the current flowing through capacitor C, I sub X is equal to VX minus V out divided by the impedance of the capacitor ZC. Now we know that this is just equal to VX minus a minus A times VX divided by 1 over SC. So we can write that IX is equal to SC times 1 plus A times VX. And simplifying this to our impedance form, VX over IX is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus A times SC. Now remember that if we had just had a capacitor without that gain, the impedance would have been 1 divided by SC. And so we can say that this C looks 1 plus A times bigger at the input of the amplifier. And so rather than drawing the capacitor around the amplifier, we can disconnect the capacitor and just put a capacitor at the input that is equal to 1 plus A times the original capacitance. So what happens to the capacitance at the output? So we're going to find the effective capacitance looking into the output. Now, and we'll do the same thing. We'll leave the input open. We have our amplifier with a gain of A. Our capacitor C going around the amplifier and we're going to put a test voltage source at the output with a value of V sub X and measure the current that flows out of the test voltage source. 
Now we know that this is an ideal amplifier, so we know that the input voltage has to be equal to minus Vx divided by A. And so we can write a current expression. Ix is equal to Vx minus Vn divided by Z sub C, which is equal to Sc times Vx plus Vx over A. And a rearranging to our form Vx over Ix, we have Vx over Ix is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over A times Sc. Now, in the normal case, we'd like the gain of our amplifier to be large, so we'd like A to be large. And what would happen here, then, is if A was large, we would just see that our capacitance looked about the same as it did uh, when it was connected across the amplifier. So anytime that we see this Miller capacitance, we can simply break the capacitance into two separate capacitors, one at the input that is 1 plus A times larger than it was originally, and we can put one at the output that's equal to 1 plus 1 over A times the original capacitor. Now this is obviously a much simpler circuit to solve for than it was before. Now, a couple of things to note. This, is, this only works if the amplifier is inverting. So a Miller capacitance is a capacitance that's specifically across an inverting gain stage. And if, we, if the gain is very large, then we can treat this output capacitance as approximately equal to the original capacitance. So in the next set of, in the next, uh, set of slides or, or set of notes, uh, we will do an example where instead of using CGD around the device, we solve for CGD using the Miller effect.